it, during our time, uh, like most kids, we're sitting around playing uh, playing uh, video games every night, and 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 we're so old that we we were doing the Bo Jackson Tech Mobile, and I remember exactly. <laughs> I remember one. Uh, I'm probably kind of ad libbing the story here, but you know, I was a young broadcaster, do my first Yacht AA tournament, and you know, I'm back in the dorm talking about it. And I'm like, man, I met this guy. He invented the four corners. He invented the fast break. He knew Dr. Naismith. Like, never thought I'd meet anybody like this, and I'm all excited. And and I just envision you sitting there, you know, playing some Tecmo Bowl, and you just with your deadpan look and delivery look up and say, oh yeah. That's my grandpa. <laughs> and I'm like, what? That's your grandpa? I'm like, no, no way. Like, I, I don't even believe you. But but it does, you know, turn out that, that John McClendon is your grandfather. So uh, nominated for the Hall of Fame for the second time, this time as a coach and not a contributor. Uh, what right. what were your thoughts when you heard that about your grandfather? Um, first thing when I found out, um, I actually knew – unofficially about a week or so before it had been released to everybody. So we really couldn't say anything because we didn't know if it was an official thing. But uh, the first thing that went through my mind was really it's about time. Um, Because it, you know, from my perspective, kind of like you said, I didn't really think of them as being as much of a, a big deal as he was until I got older and could really appreciate it. Um, but, you know, you look at uh, history books and record books and as a coach and the stuff that he did with uh, the championships uh, that were won and being one of the founding members of the CIAA, um, he was the first uh, African American coach to coach a pro team. So you know, he should be recognized as a coach. How how big of a deal was that for for you and your family and, and everyone close to the situation that he get that recognition not only as a contributor but as a coach as well? Oh, we uh, we all thought it was huge. Um, cause at the time he was inducted, um, as a contributor, that was 1979. So I was five at the time. I didn't, you know, five year old, you can't really grasp the concept of, you know, what's big, what's important, what's not. But at the time, and you could look up like the records, but as a coach, like his coaching record and the things that he had done were as at least as good, if not better than coaches that were already in the hall of fame at the time. It, do, does it bother you? I mean, you know, people now there's, there's more knowledge obviously with the internet and you can look these things up, but he still doesn't get the widespread recognition. You know, when you think four corners, you know, everybody's going to say Dean Smith. You know, they're not going to say John McClendon on average, you know, the average person. Do you still think he gets enough credit for everything he did with the fast break, with the full court press, uh, with the four corner offense and, and all of the innovation uh, that he did taking the game to another level? Um, he does, I think, from the people that really matter. Um, and I, I mean that to say, you know, Granddad was – the least famous, famous person you could <laughs> ever meet. He was unassuming. He didn't seek the attention. But um, he knew, uh, like Coach Dean Smith, and if uh, Coach Smith were still alive, he would be the first one to tell you who he got the four corners from. Um, it just happened to be that uh, Coach Smith was on a bigger stage, as it were. So he had more popularity. What was it like being the grandson, uh, or what was it like for him to be your grandfather? I mean, was he just all basketball? Was he never? Ba- I would imagine that situation probably never talked about basketball that much. Uh, how, how was it? Um, from my point of view, he was just granddad, and uh, like I said, I didn't even realize how big of a deal he was until uh, 
after he had passed away. But, um, you know, in the moment growing up, we'd always gone to like, uh, summer camps and I, I tag along with him, you know, when he did seminars and stuff like that in the summertime, but it really didn't hit me, you know, that, uh, within the basketball community, whether it be college or pro or what have you, um, how big of a deal he was. You know, Mo, I didn't realize, uh, talking with Maurice Banks, he is the grandson and grandson of John McClendon, a classmate of, of mine from Winston-Salem State and, and many other Rams out there. I didn't even realize until recently how soon that he stopped coaching. Uh, I mean, he was in his, what, early to mid-50s during his last job? Uh, correct. Yeah, he, um, and of course, this was all before we were born, but he, he had stopped at a relatively young age, went back to it, and, you know, thinking back that, that maybe be why they call him a contributor because he was still involved um, in basketball, but not actively coaching. Did he ever, did you guys ever talk about uh, like why he may have not gone? I mean, cause you look at it today. I mean, people are coaching up until, you know, 70 and a, and a beyond. I mean, <laughs> this, he, that would just be his coaching prime today. If you, you know, look at somebody, Oh, he's 54 or 55. Like, oh, okay. He's just now starting to, to learn how this whole thing works. A little different today, but no, it, uh, it never came up. He had definitely had the energy because like I said, he, still traveled a lot, but, um, he could have coached at any level for a whole lot longer than he did. Well, what is the neatest thing? Like if there's one thing that, you know, kind of sticks out, uh, about your grandfather that's just really cool or, or a story or something that is just really special to you, uh, that you'll always remember about him basketball or otherwise. Basketball was something that, you know, he did and he loved, but it wasn't who he was. Uh, that's why I say I always knew him as granddad and not really as a coach, even though we all called him coach. So you realize that he was, but it really didn't consume him. Um, the biggest thing I re- remember and loved was uh, just the time that we spent together and, you know, how down to earth he was. Just look them up, know your history. It's uh, a lot of people get credit for, you know, different things. You kind of have to dig and do your research. You know, Maurice, I had the chance to to interview your granddad a couple times as a young man. And if, and if I would have had the sense then that, that God gave a house fly, I would have saved it all and, and bronzed it and, and really been able to just pull it up right now. Uh, and, and now that I have this 42 year old brain, I can't remember everything that happened then, but I do remember asking, uh, your granddad about what it was like, uh, I mean, to learn basketball from the guy who invented basketball, which he had the chance to do at the university of Kansas when Dr. Naismith was the athletic director there. Did he ever share any stories or did your parents ever relay any stories, you know, about just how cool it is to, to know the guy that invented the game? He uh, he did no no major stories that are really basketball related, but he did uh, mention you know a couple of times how uh, his dad um, knew who Dr. Nate Smith was, knew that he'd be taken care of, and that uh, Dr. Nate Smith would look out for him while he was at school, uh, kind of like how. It, like how you know Big House was how he looked after all of us, <laughs> even though we didn't know it. Um, he mentioned a couple of times how you know just just the whole idea, the whole concept, because you know basketball even then when he was in school was just kind of a new thing, um, and how it had evolved from like a peach basket to pretty much how it is now. I mean, it was really like a pioneering type thing back then. No major stories, though, Um, directly of Dr. Nesbitt, but just how things were 
um, back then when he went to school. So how excited are you with the the actual ceremony itself? Um, you know, it, it's a big deal, I would imagine, for you and your family uh, when, when people are actually inducted. And, and you're not five years old this time. You, you'll, you'll be closer to 45 than you will be to five. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> how excited are you and your family about just actually going and the whole experience when it does, you know, officially happen? Oh, really cool. Um it's uh, now, you know, this go around, I'm old enough to be able to appreciate it and just really truly understand how big of a deal it is for him to uh, be inducted in the basketball hall of fame. Well, if you get there, Mo, and you do a little crying, maybe you can replace the uh, crying Jordan meme that has just taken over the world. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right for all those Carolina fans out there. All right. Well, cool, Mo. I appreciate it, man. And, and congratulations again to, to you and your family. It's well-deserved. And, and I'll never forget the day that I, I thought I had the best story of all in the dorm. I interviewed John McClendon. I met the legend. And Maurice just calmly looks up from the joystick. Oh, you met my granddad. Oh, good for you. Good job. 